Okay, so I'm gonna speak English, okay? Uh, thank you very much everyone for coming to this fantastic event. The, today's conference uh, is a part of a bigger series of events um, under the umbrella of Ukraine Economy Week. And I will introduce the Ukraine Economy Week to you first. And then I will move um, and I will give the floor to Elena Nizalova, who will talk about the today's conference. So once again, thank you very much for coming. Um, I'm the president of the Kiev School of Economics. The Ukraine Economy Week is organized jointly with Kiev School of Economics and ICU, Investment Capital Ukraine, this time. This is the second time we run the Ukraine Economy Week. The first time it was done in May 2017, half a year ago. That time it was run jointly with the National Bank of Ukraine and Visa. So we rotate uh, high-profile partners, and the idea of Ukraine Economy Week is to demonstrate essential intellectual sovereignty of Ukraine, that we here today are capable of providing intellectual material of the best of the top-notch level at the world level. So we are the people who are going to decide our fate. We are capable of discussing the issues, uh, economics in particular, but more generally issues of development and institutional capacity in Ukraine and reforms and the ways to move forward uh, in an independent, mature and deep way without uh, sliding into populism or political engagements. We understand that Ukraine is in a, on a difficult path to reform itself. It's, it's a thorny path, it's not gonna be easy, it's not gonna happen over a day, even over a year, or even over five years. But we're trying to contribute with uh, what we do best. We're economists at the Kiev School of Economics. We have a lot of friends of the Kiev School of Economics. We have ambassadors around the Kiev School of Economics. And I want you to become ambassadors of the school as well. I want you to become the carriers of the idea that Ukraine is strong, intellectually strong, first of all, and can take care of itself and develop its own path. And uh, whatever is happening in the politics or in the economy, these are temporary shocks and we will move forward. So the idea of Ukraine Economy Week is to regularly provide series of events with high power covered ideas and, and uh, speakers where we can talk deeply about the substantive issues. Um, this time, Ukraine Economy Week uh, is, is, uh, is based on two major events. One of them is today, the conference, People Matter. The second is a more practical, less academic conference. This conference is in Odessa next weekend. Uh, that conference will focus on the policy side. Uh, both here and uh, in Odessa, we have very, uh, very excellent and prominent speakers. I'm not going to talk about today's speakers, I'll leave this uh, to Elena, but in Odessa we will see um, um, Markus Brunier-Meyer from Princeton, the director of the Finance uh, Center. Um, we, will, uh, we will have as a keynote uh, Austri, the second person in research in IMF. And we also have uh, Varoufakis, the former, an economist who is the former minister of finance uh, in Greece. Uh, that's on top of two days of uh, uh, people from Financial Times, economists, regulators, local economists, and so on and so forth. Um, we also have several events which are focused on specific activities that the school cares deeply around, uh, about. One of them is public governance. We have a program uh, and the department in uh, public policy and governments. They will hold an open discussion with some, uh, uh, <coughs> with some politicians and also uh, um, people from the government of the United Kingdom uh, about the effects on trans of transparency on the governance and the right balance between transparency and privacy in the transition period. That will happen uh, later in the, uh, in the week. The week is actually not quite a week, it's two weeks. Okay, it's 12 days or 11 instead of seven. We also have some events uh, which are connected to the, uh, our business education and um, department and our MBAs, as well as the public procurement forum, which will discuss um, Oh, the issues of procurement in the country. I want to mention that uh, we are research-focused school as this conference is research-focused and uh, we are very proud as an example, as a piece of evidence that last week uh, the Financial Times cited uh, research by the Kiev School of Economics, essentially by the Center for Procurement. So we are capable of producing research which is uh, the best in, in the world and uh, we are very proud of that. Um, this conference is made possible uh, due to uh, numerous funders. Thank you very 
very much, everyone, uh, for supporting us. And uh, Olena will, uh, and others will uh, talk more about the funders. Uh, we are also uh, um, grateful specifically to Olena and to Yuri Gordnichenko, who are co-organizing the conference. Uh, the, the, you know, it says that there are three co-organizers of the conference, but frankly, it's just Elena who, who well, she, she, she told me not to say that. But we are so busy that if it were not for Elena, the, the conference would not have happened. So I would, I would like to ask you for a round of applause for Elena, who, who is carrying the, the burden on her. And uh, with this, Elena, I invite you to take the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much, Timothy. Uh, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the organizing committee, let me extend a very warm welcome for you to this conference. We've organized it together with several organizations which provided their funding for that. That's the Associations of Comparative Economic Studies, Stockholm Institute of Transition Economics, University of California, Berkeley, and the Kiev School of Economics. And we work also in partnership with Vox Ukraine, University of Kent, Institute for Economic Research, Except Project, and the World Bank Land Project. Let me start with a little bit of a history, because my presence here, even though I work now in the University of Kent, my presence here among the organizers of a conference is not accidental. Paraphrasing the famous saying, you can take a girl out of the KC, but you can't take KC out of the girl. And being myself, KC alumni, I spent first years after my PhD here in this excellent institution, educating new generation of economists, but also trying to engage with the government policymakers to make them aware of the emerging research evidence generated by this um, school which could be used to inform new policies and interventions. However, prior to the revolution of dignity, there was little to no interest in such engagement. But then I couldn't have dreamt of such a conference of this caliber, which would bring together researchers from around the world interested in the well-being in the region. Ukrainian government officials politicians and civil activists to discuss what really matters for people's lives, to consider policies which have the potential to improve the quality of their lives, policies which are not taken out of the blue sky, but which are informed by high quality research evidence. And a year ago, I realized that the right time had come. And the idea was generously supported by Timothy and Yuri Gorodnichenko, who is the chairman of the KC International Academic Board, both also alumni of KC, by other KC alumni and friends of the school. And this enthusiastic group, in spite of Timothy's words, I had had lots of support from these people who volunteered their nights and weekends throughout this year. And we hope that you will find the results of these efforts worthwhile your time. First of all, for these two days, we have brought together scholars whose research focus is on people, their well-being and various factors which affect it. Second, we invited top-level government officials, renowned experts, members of the parliament and civil activists to discuss the progress of ongoing Ukrainian reforms in areas which have the most influence on people's lives. Finally, we opened the conference up to wider audience because we hope that that can engage new researchers into the area, but also show the policymakers that there is this research evidence that they can augment their policies, that can, you, can build new ones based on this evidence generated for the region in the context of our realities. We will be happy if you will establish new contexts or renew old ones during these days, which would enable greater use of existing evidence in current policy makers, as this is the only way possibly, pro most likely to make fewer mistakes and achieve better results. But also 
through this discussion would help to generate future policy-driven research. It is gratifying for me to note that the agenda for the academic part of the conference covers a wide range of very interesting questions on population well-being and quality of life, especially those aspects that can be influenced by government policies and that policy discussions will address challenges and opportunities of the four reforms in Ukraine being currently, right now, at this moment, last week, this week, next week, considered by the parliament, which have very high potential to improve population well-being in this country. The healthcare, education, pension, and land reform. During this Two days, we will discuss Ukrainian reforms. But this experience will also be useful for other countries in the region, which are facing similar challenges on the way to improve population well-being. Tomorrow, we will also have a special session for journalists, where most of the conference speakers will be available for interviews to speak to the journalist in really plain language without scientific jargon about their findings and their implications for Ukraine. If we will need help with translation, we will be happy to provide that. I hope also that the impact of the conference will extend far beyond tomorrow. All of the materials will be made available for future access on KC website. Also, on behalf of the editorial board of Vox Ukraine, we would like to invite researchers, panelists, and participants to contribute both analytical materials and opinion pieces on the topics of the conference to make the discussion going to uncover further issues which might have been missed from the conference. We have also received support from the Journal of Comparative Economics to publish a special issue on population well-being in post-socialist countries, which will be based on the academic part of this conference. And this is actually a great testimony to the quality of the research you will see during these two days, because the journal is one of the top uh, in the field. I wish you very engaging and productive time at the conference and a very pleasant stay in Kyiv for our guests. And now I would like to move on to our next, next item on the agenda and say a few words about that. Because one of the most difficult challenges which governments face throughout the world at the moment, you know, these past um, recent few years, is related to migration, both voluntary and involuntary movement of people across state borders. And the impact of this, uh, this migration has on migrants themselves, those who are left behind, and people in the receiving countries, is very important to understand. Several of the countries in the post-Soviet space are affected also by conflicts, either frozen, as in Transnistria, Georgia, and Armenia, or active, as in Ukraine. And as a result, the region experiences not only the economic migration, but also the one which is driven by conflict. Therefore, because of this really, really important issue, we have decided to devote a considerable part of the conference to migration. And I'm very happy to present to you our keynote speaker, Professor Klaus Zimmermann, who is co-director of the Center for Population Development and Labor Economics at the UNU Merit, which is the United Nations University Maastricht Economic and Social Research Institute on Innovation and Technology. He is also a visiting professor at Harvard and Princeton Universities. Professor Zimmerman is the founder of the Institute for the Study of Labor, where he was also the director from 1998 to 2016. Under his leadership, the Institute established itself among the world's leading research institutions and think tanks in the field of labor economics and beyond. Actually, my first encounter with Professor Zimmerman was related to this part of his career, and it made me feel extremely honored to be accepted by him to, to the ranks of the Institute Fellows after my PhD.
some years after. <laughs> Professor Timmerman has initiated migration research in economics in Europe and has studied the creation and effectiveness of labor market reforms. He made important contributions for the understanding of the consequences of employment, economic success, and integration. Important research projects of his have dealt with the effects of East enlargement of the European Union for the European labor markets and the economic consequences of ethnic diversity. Professor Zimmerman is committed to the diffusion of research to policy and society. He regularly writes in leading international media and advises the European Commission and the World Bank on labor market and migration issues. He is author or editor of 45 books and over 115 papers in peer-reviewed research journals and 130 chapters in collected volumes. Since this year, Professor Zimmerman is also the president of the Global Labour Organization. So I'm most honored and I would be very grateful if you would help me to welcome to the stage Professor Klaus Zimmerman.